Hi, this is Aro. Hi, this is Ava. And today, this is my very first microscope. Today, we're going to do some experiments with it. So, if you're not familiar with a microscope, like pretend you live in Antarctica. <laughs> then, then, these are the parts of a microscope. First, we have the turner. Like, if you look into it and you want to adjust the light, you can use the turner. Then we have a holder, like, I needed to use the holder once. I need to, like, bring it all the way to my home. And then we have the adjust knob. Like, if you if you pull this knob, you can adjust the height. You see? The height's going up, down. And the height's going up. So that's what the adjust knob is for. And then we have the stage. The stage is where you put the specimen. The spe so this is the specimen. You put the specimen like this. The stage holds the specimen. And the stage clip puts the specimen in place. So now we're going to look into the microscope. So yeah, also you know you need to know where the arm switch is. Like this thing is off. When this, when this, like the line is up, it's off. When when the circle is up, it's on. Also, there's some batteries in it. See, in the down, there's like this thing with some lock with some batteries in it. And just to make sure, otherwise how it is on, you can check for this light. If this light's on, the microscope's on. Like how to see all the cells in very detail is you have to like find the right light. So let me see if I can find it. I found it now, and this is how you see something when you look in from it from a microscope. Like, this is the light. I told you, when you on it, it goes on. It goes through the hole in the stage, through the specimen. Light, light passes through the objective, which is this, then through the body, then through the eye, then through the eyepiece, then you, then, then it comes to your eye where you see it. This is a magnifying glass, and this is a Rubik's cube. Like, if you look from the Rubik's cube at the magnifying glass, the Rubik's cube is opaque. That means light bounces off it to the magnifying glass. Imagine this: the light you look into a magnifying glass, it bounces off the Rubik's cube. It just goes through the magnifying glass, and you see it. You can see transparent things through a microscope, but how do you make it transparent? There are two ways. One is to cut it into thin slices. The other is to penetrate it with some material that will make it transparent. And today, I'm going to cut it into thin slices. So here we go. Today, we're going to make the specimen. So I have my asparagus here. And now I'm going to cut it into thin slices. I have some very thin pieces of asparagus. So now, time to make the specimen. We get the specimen glass like this. This is specimen slide. And now we're going to put some asparagus in it. Then one drop of water. And then you add the cover. Second, let me retrieve it. Yeah, then you add the cover. how thin this asparagus is. If you want to see it correctly in the, in the microscope, like you need it to be this thin. thin. Here's a close-up of it. Okay, so now I'm all ready. I cut it. The specimen slide is all ready. And we're going to put it in the microscope now. Okay, so how you do it is you first, yeah, insert it like this to the stage clips. And then I think you can get a glimpse of what's happening. 
Like, many of you don't see, probably. Like, if you do see, you can adjust. Like, if pretend it's 40x, and you think you can see anything. Like, look now, it's changing. But if you, if you just do 40x, and you just do random light, what it, like, it just looks blurred. Like, for example, like, tell me if you see anything. Send an email to me. Like, do it now. Now, now. Do you notice the difference or anything? When you, when you like, do it all the way over here, even though it might be, it's adjusting more or something like that, you have to do that very correct light, even though it's, like, 40x. And, okay, so, if you want to do, like, 10x, you can, like, move this thing. So, yeah, maybe I'll do... We'll do this. It's four X. And now and now this is also the thing. If you adjust this, it like does the different views. And you might think that like pretend you need glasses or whatever. And if you wanna adjust the light, this is the light like adjuster. It's way at the bottom over here. You see the place where I'm pointing, yeah that's it. And you can turn it this way or that way. That adjusts the light. Okay. Everything is pitch black now. Oh, it's getting a little light, a little light, a little light. I see it. The full detail. I see some... Like, it's so much detail, it's hard to explain. If I can also see the cells. I'm going to make another specimen of onion. Cut the onion into very thin pieces. And put the slide upside down. Place the onion in it. Get one drop of water. And plus and put the closed lid in it, into it. Yeah, it can be kind of tricky when you don't do it in like very thin pieces. Okay, so I can see the specimen in the microscope. It looks like balls actually. Onion cells are hexagon patterns. They're like so many cells close together. And asparagus cells are like totally different. Like onions go grow from underground. But the asparagus is stem. By using this experiment, I've learned that, this, that the cells from the onion is different from the cells from the as asparagus. A lot more experiments with my microscope here. And you can and please subscribe to my channel. Hope you like this video. It's a fun and easy experiment to try at home. And just in case, if you don't have a microscope, you could like, you could like test check somewhere in Walmart. I didn't get this microscope from Walmart, but I but I went to Walmart. <laughs> so yeah, that was just kind of a joke. So bye, friends.